What is going on guys? So today is the day that we're going to be putting in the case swap. We got the engine bay nice, clean, painted, prepped up. Uh, we have the passenger side mount in, or I'm sorry, the passenger side bracket. And then we have the rear mount in. And then for the motor, uh, there's not that much prep. You just put the passenger side mount on put the driver side transmission bracket on and I think I'm going to leave the rear T bracket off um, and put it on last. Uh, I didn't do too much to the motor. It's just a all stock K28-2 RSX Type S engine. All stock. The only thing that I changed was um, I took the power steering pulley off or the power steering pump off and I replaced it with a power steering delete pulley. And I changed the fuel rail uh, to this AEM fuel rail um, because the RSX, uh, they come with the returnless fuel rail and I didn't want my fuel rail or I didn't want my fuel to not return. So that's the reason why I went with the uh, aftermarket fuel rail. Alrighty, so we finally got the motor inside the car. Unfortunately, something happened to the video and it cut off and stopped working. But it is in the car. Uh, I'm just gonna get this off the jack stands and roll it into the light so then you guys can see. Here we go, guys. So everything's in. Uh, let's see. We got everything in. We still need to finish. Uh, the charging cable, we need to run the engine harness uh, through the passenger side. I'm going to figure out some kind of way to get this wire uh, hooked up somewhere along this valve cover on the back side. And then uh, I do need to repaint the engine bay right here because it scratched up a little bit. Uh, but it's not too hard. Uh, should be easy. now just going to be little things here and there i'll keep you guys posted uh we're done for today i think the next thing i'm gonna do when i come back is uh probably drill out these uh the mounts the lower mounts for the radiator and the condenser and then also uh, probably just finish this charge harness get it all hooked up uh, i'm gonna be taking all these plastic clips off of the line and uh, figuring out some way to hook it up to this um, and then I gotta remove this guy and then slip it into here or maybe here I think I'm gonna slip it through this one and then get the battery tray back in and get this puppy started hopefully I'm doing this right um, kind of kind of I'm kind of just going off what everybody says online. Uh, so this half right here is the RSX harness. Um, pretty much it was just cut right here where the battery terminal was for the positive one. Um, and I have two wires, uh, this white wire. Th and just note that these wire colors may not be the same as yours because this uh, wire was made uh by somebody that i bought off but that i bought the charge harness off of he made it um but just so you know everything is pretty much still stock on that half all the uh, sensors and stuff is on that half um but this uh black wire ran to my alternator and then this white wire ran to my starter um it doesn't matter which color your uh starter or alternator is but just know that whatever your alternator wire is um, well for me I'm running it to the uh, fuse box which is the front uh, the front screw for the alternator and then this back screw I'm uh, hooking it up to the battery um, so this first wire the alternator wire pretty straightforward from the alternator straight to this fuse box right here and then my starter wire is gonna go straight 
to the battery terminal, the positive battery terminal. And then from the battery terminal, it's gonna come to the second um, screw right here. Okay, so for those that are wondering how I uh, did my wiring, the alternator wire uh, is actually joined with one of these uh, factory terminals. Um, I just had an extra one of these laying around, so I just got this, crimped it up. Um, what I used was this ring piece right here. Uh, all I did was cut it off right here or break it off right here, and then I opened it back up, and then I used it as a, a crimp. This is only temporary. Uh, I do plan on redoing the wiring uh, myself. That way it's just one wire instead of two wires crimped together. Uh, but just to get the car started, uh, this is what I'm doing. Okay, so this is essentially how it looks. Uh, I'm gonna crimp this side down, and then I'm gonna get the uh, second wire and crimp that side down as well, uh, which I'm gonna be using this factory wire. Um, so, let's see. This one will go here. This one will go here. And then you got your battery positive. And then you got your power going to your starter, uh, which this line right here will join in with this line right here. Okay, so here's the finished product, um, other than the loom itself and the electrical tape. I kind of wanted to show you guys uh, how the wiring was. So you have your alternator wire coming straight to the fuse box and then you have your starter wire going straight to the positive and then from the positive coming back to the fuse box on the left side um, that's it next we'll be working on relooming the engine harness and directing it inside of the cabin Okay, so before I actually put the engine harness uh, into the cabin, I wanted to uh, re-loom the chassis harness as well, the shock tower harness. Um, I'm still running, you know, headlights and all that stuff. The actual old engine harness or shock tower harness, we're going to cut open the loom and run these plugs uh, back inside. And then at the same time, we'll be running the engine harness inside of the cabin. Okay, so I have the shock tower plugs all the way out of the loom back to the firewall plug right here. Now all we're gonna do is cut a slit right here. That way we can pull the old wires back in. All right, so we have all the wires pushed inside. Um, now all we have to do is come in. Crap. All right, so now we just come inside uh, look underneath here, pull these wires in, just three plugs, pull it in, let them hang in here. There she is, nice and clean. Now we just need to get this engine harness into this loom and pressed in as well. All right, so now we got it through the rubber grommet. We're gonna slide it in here, put the grommet back on, and then try to hide this wire a little bit better. Okay, so I got everything taped up. All nice and tucked. I'm not too worried about how it looks right here because the battery tray actually sits right here, so it looks something like that. Um, but that's it for the wiring, engine wiring harness. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and put the conversion harness in. Alrighty, so then there's the green yellow plug, um, I'm sorry, wire right here, which is the fuel pump. You have a green red wire. I know it doesn't look red, it looks black, but this is a green red wire right here. This is for the ELD, which I believe is like the, um, um, the codes, check engine codes. 
and then you have the green orange wire which is for your check engine light okay so for starters you need to find your stock ECU plugs uh, and figure out which one uh, is which I believe this is the A plug which is the biggest plug and then your D plug which is the second biggest plug um, when you look at these plugs you want to look at it from the back side and the locking tab up um, so for starters you want to find the a7 wire which is right here the green yellow and then you want to find the a13 wire which is right here the orange green and third come to the D plug and you're gonna get to uh, D10 which is right here this uh, green red wire I can pull it out right here and since this car is staying K series I'm just gonna go ahead and cut all these wires and solder them together okay so just to make life easier uh, I hid all the wires away after cutting the wires that I need off again the a green yellow which is a7 pretty much green yellow green yellow um, green orange green orange green red green red or, there we go alrighty so now we have green orange green yellow and green red all together uh, we got it tied up we have our shrink wrap in place now we're ready to solder the wires and heat up the shrink wrap okay so after you get these uh three plugs or these three wires soldered and heat shrink you're gonna come to this plug over here um which is off of the conversion harness uh, there's gonna be one wire by itself which is a uh, white blue wire and then you're gonna come over here to this uh, I believe it's called a B plug um, the other white plug and you're gonna come to this back side and on these on this second roll right here second roll uh, three in which is this white white blue wire uh, you're not gonna cut it but you're gonna tee into it. Uh, that's why I have this fitting right here. I'm just gonna get a, a crimp, get it crimped in and then tie it, tee into it. Um, unfortunately, I have to go to the auto store real quick to go buy one of those. Um, so we'll go ahead and come right back. Okay, so next is your primary O2 sensor. Um, mine has been cut and spliced into, uh, for a different plug, but you guys can, um, depending on what harness you guys use, you're actually probably going to have to look this up yourself, um, only because some wire colors are different, uh, depending on what conversion harness, conversion harness you guys get, but once you guys figure that out, you simply, um, simply just come back here. Um, there's a hole, there's a hole somewhere around here, uh, in this carpet, and you're gonna have to cut this open, and then, uh, feed the, feed the cable down into the hole. Um, I don't have my carpet out right now, so I'm not gonna mess with it, but pretty much just feed this, uh, wire down into the tunnel right there and then you're just gonna plug into your O2 sensor okay so now on to the driver's side um, there's gonna be let me see, let's see if I got video in here there's gonna be a plug up in there it's gonna be a big brown plug and a big gray plug uh, you're gonna unplug the Big gray plug, which is the C101 plug, and then you're gonna plug your um, conversion harness into the gray plug, 
After that, you'll have three wires um, from the conversion harness, and you just run through that through the firewall. Alrighty, so we're on the driver's side. You're gonna have a you're gonna have three wires. I only have two wires because um, my third wire I tucked back into here because I'm not using. Um, but I believe it's like a white green wire, and that's gonna be your for your fan switch. Um, if you have K-Pro, which is what, is what I have, I don't have to run a fan switch. Um, but pretty much these, the three wires are going to have to go through the firewall into the uh, engine bay. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and find somewhere to push that through. So when you get your uh, wires fed through the um, firewall, the green red wire is simply just going to hook up to this green red wire um, for your brake and then the yellow wire will hook up to uh, your temp sensor temp sensor which um, is wherever you're going to put the temp sensor um, i don't have a temp sensor yet but for me uh, i'm gonna have a uh, air what is this air assist delete so this line is going to be plugged and i'm just going to have like a little um plug right here and when i have that plug i'm able to put a um temp sensor onto it and i'm just gonna hook that yellow wire onto there and uh that should be it Alrighty, guys so uh that's it for today for wiring um the car has power to the engine the car turns over we got all the conversion wire hooked up um, except for the temp sensor uh, which I'll have to order or actually I think it's at the house um, it should be in the house today but once the temp sensor comes in I'll go ahead and uh, I show you a little video on how to install that uh, it's pretty self-explanatory it's just um, a big old screw that replaces this uh this valve right here this air assist uh, it's pretty much just a big screw that screws into here and then i believe you get like an old older style b series or d series temp sensor and it screws right into the middle of it um and at that point you just take the yellow wire to there um but yeah that's that's everything's here um we got the engine bay mocked up uh, once we get the, all the wiring and stuff hooked up, uh, we'll move on to the fuel system. Um, we don't have any of the fuel system in yet, but hopefully um, we'll get some of that stuff uh, here shortly. Um, that should be it. Oh, um, also, we notched uh, you can see right here uh, this corner right here we notched it a little bit for the uh, radiator to fit so you can see here it's kind of I guess I cut it straight right here and then I started beating this down uh, that way the corner of the radiator could fit more easily we also have to order some radiator stays uh, from k -Tune. and brake booster. We're going to have to get a long hose for that. Also, if you guys have not already, please like, share, and subscribe to the video. Um, you guys will love the upco upcoming episodes. Um, the car getting started running hopefully tuned uh on e85 very soon also my buddy talo uh will be getting his car together soon as well i know the car has been sitting like that for a very long time but i'm sure he will kick it into gear and get things moving before the winter hits um because everyone knows we don't like working in the winter in the cold um, for people like me, I do not he have a heated garage, so we need to get things done soon.
See you guys. Stay tuned. Okay, so I had to steal the battery from my daily car because uh, the other battery wasn't strong enough. But we have it hooked up. Ready to turn over. The car is not going to start because I don't have any fuel lines uh, on the car yet. But I just want to check and see if I have all the wiring correct and see if the car starts and turn over. Well, not start, but turn over. Is the clutch, uh, what's the clutch? No, you just turn it over. Go ahead. Okay. 